Welcome back once again, fellow soldierners, to appropriating the culture, the preeminent den and hive of our society's most deplorable members. But if they hate us, we recall that they hated Jesus first and take it as an honor when they call us wretched, vile, no good, stinking I said bleeps. Get ready for a lot of unnecessary censorship because today's topic is all about language, especially bad language. I'm Pastor Shane and I'll be your word police today as we appropriate some culture. As we previously said, Christians are called to be in the world, but not of the world. And sure, at times we fail in both ways, being out where we should be in and of where we shouldn't be. And that can also happen when it comes to language. Sometimes the language that we use can prohibit how effectively we live in, where we don't recognize our audience or speak their language, and instead use Christianese, these sort of biblical shorthands or Christian slang that outsiders don't understand. Eucharist, sanctification, post-trip, pre-trip, Calvinist, an Ecclesiastes moment, a road to Damascus moment, we like moments, eschatology, intercessory, hermeneutical, sacrament, agape, 1040 window. Our language can be a serious concern for living in, particularly when we're talking about the arts, but the bigger concern for most Christians when it comes to language is all about of, speaking the way the world does. And the Bible does have quite a bit to say on the topic of the tongue. It says things like this, James, those who consider themselves religious and yet do not keep a tight rein on their tongues deceive themselves and their religion is worthless. Proverbs. The soothing tongue is a tree of life, but a perverse tongue crushes the spirit. Psalm 34. Whoever of you loves life and desires to see many good days, keep your tongue from evil and your lips from telling lies. Now, most of these verses are talking about what we say, not how we say it. It's not really dealing with the particular words that we use. It's not primarily about profanity or cuss words or swear words. You don't need to use profanity to lie. You don't need to swear to belittle or demean or cut down people. You don't need to cuss in order to slander. You don't need to be obscene to gossip. Most of the scriptures are really driving at something more than the specific word choices, but there are scriptures that do seem to be concerned with the particular words that we use. Ephesians. But among you there must not be even a hint of sexual immorality, or of any kind of impurity, or of greed, because these are improper for God's holy people. Nor should there be obscenity, foolish talk, or coarse joking, which are out of place, but rather thanksgiving. Man, the Apostle Paul is a bit of a b I said prude, prude. This episode is going to get annoying. But what exactly is foolish talk? Back to Ephesians. Do not let any unwholesome talk come out of your mouths, but only what is helpful for building others up according to their needs, that it may benefit those who listen. Colossians. But now you must also rid yourselves of all such things as these, anger, rage, malice, slander, and filthy language from your lips. Seems pretty straightforward here. Don't use filthy language, don't have foolish talk or unwholesome talk, and that is pretty straightforward, at least in principle. But it gets more interesting when we start to apply it. We typically think of language like it's two columns. In the one column, we have our bad words, words that you shouldn't say, and in the other column, we have our amoral words, words where it doesn't matter whether you say them or you don't. They're not good, they're not bad, they're just words. That's a significantly longer column. But who decides which words go into which column? Does God come from on a high and say, these are the naughty words? <laughs> no, we decide, this is cultural. When Paul was writing and telling us not to use filthy language, he wasn't thinking about our particular swear words. He couldn't possibly have, because the entire English language did not exist yet and would not exist for another 400 years or so. Different languages have different bad words, and in fact, even within the same language, there are cultural differences. Fanny, that's not an offensive American word. Fanny packs are offensive, but for a different reason. And yet for other English-speaking countries, it would be totally inappropriate to use the word fanny, because it's a little risque, it has a different meaning. Language is cultural, and the culture decides which words fall into which column, and it varies from place to place, and it changes over time. 
One of my favorite examples of this is from the show Deadwood, which is about a mining town in the 1800s, a rough town with rough people who speak roughly. Well, some linguists critiqued the use of profanity on the show, saying that it was anachronistic. The show creators respond to that by saying, yeah, we know. We know that's not the profanity that they would have used in that time, but the profanity that they would have used wouldn't have had the same effect to a modern audience. They wouldn't have sounded like bristly, tough, and dangerous men. They would have sounded like Yosemite Sam, shouting things like, Tarnation! Tarnation! That would have been offensive speech in the 1800s. But by the mid-1900s, it was in children's programming. Language changes, and over time, words that were in one column get shifted into the other column. As Christians, we may look at the world and lament and say, man, the world has gotten so coarse with its language. We've coarsened as a society, and possibly, in fact, probably. But also, let's consider this. Maybe some of the words that were in one category have migrated to the other one in our culture. In fact, I think it probably has. Most Christians, I think, would say that the language on broadcast television has gotten more coarse, but the federal law hasn't changed. The FCC regulates this stuff, and federal law prohibits obscene and decent and profane content from being broadcast on the radio or TV. Profane content includes grossly offensive language that is considered a public nuisance. But since language is cultural, determining what obscene, indecent, and profane mean can be difficult depending on who you talk to. So enforcement of these rules generally begins with complaints from the public. The truth is, if you're seeing more objectionable language on broadcast television, that's because the public no longer finds it objectionable. As Christians, uh, this can be very challenging for us because we're traditionalists. The Bible tells us not to use filthy language. These are the filthy words. We don't use those words. And then the culture changes. But we still don't use those words because they're objectively sinful, right? And then it becomes a Christian tradition. And we're like the Pharisees. We love our traditions. How can you be a Christian and say those words? I hope we can understand and empathize a little with the Pharisees. This is challenging. And to make matters even more complicated, we're a subculture. And as a subculture, we have our own rules, and that might mean using different language in that context. It's fine to wear a bathing suit, but you don't wear it to a funeral, unless it's a themed funeral or something. But the point is, context still matters. There are some words that are fine to use here that are not fine to use there. Context matters. But if you should happen to use the wrong word, you can always turn to today's sponsor. Appropriating the Culture is brought to you by Holy Soap, the only soap that has been blessed by seven ecumenical councils and guaranteed to wash away clean the filth from your body. Lather, rinse, and wash your hands, mouth, and brain for total cleanliness. Starting today, my viewers can get 20% off their initial pack featuring the all-new scent, Self-Righteous Pomp. Be better, smell better with Holy Soap. Alrighty, so as Christians, we are to be set apart from the world by our speech, both in terms of what we say and how we say it. But our thinking about this can be very rigid and shallow, where we don't recognize the evolution and cultural nature of language. And worse, it can prohibit us from living in our world and start to again think that sin is external. I can't go into the world. There's bad words there. But as we said, sin is not external. Luke chapter 6. A good man brings good things out of the good stored up in his heart, and an evil man brings evil things out of the evil stored up in his heart. For the mouth speaks what the heart is full of. The answer to how we tame our tongue is not to plug our ears, it's to change our hearts. Now, if all you're taking in is the speech of the world, well then, yeah, that, that's probably going to seep into your heart, which is why we emphasized last week our need for the spiritual disciplines. That's how we grow to become more like God, who hears every foul word ever spoken and is still without sin. Exposure is not the problem. Dr. Samuel Johnson compiled one of the first English dictionaries, and the respectable lords and ladies of London came to him to congratulate him on his achievement. And the lady said, Dr. Johnson, we are delighted to find that you have not included any indecent or obscene words in your dictionary. And he replied, and I congratulate you ladies on being able to look them up. Part of the issue with thinking about exposure to language as the problem is because it's already here. You already know the words. It's not what comes in. Out of the overflow of your heart, the mouth speaks. Somebody cuts you off in traffic, what comes out of your mouth? Peace, patience, mercy, grace, or something else. Unwholesome language. If you're concerned about what's coming out of your mouth, you need to address what's in your heart. 
Well, we'll have more to say on this topic, so tune in next week for that. In the meantime, leave me a profanity laced post on Twitter or my author's Facebook page or on Locals, and I will respond to you out of the overflow of my heart next time on Appropriating the Culture. Mm-hmm.